Here I am, family. Good morning to you. Um, let me just go right in. It's been a very interesting last couple of weeks dealing with my house stuff. I really pray that you all will just listen to these. I try to make them um, short, but it is difficult because it's been 25 years that I've been fighting for my home. Uh, and I also want to thank you all. Um, I've been getting those uh, payments, royalty things, where you all are buying my books that give a little bit about my house story. So this is, again, the latest book that I've written, um, <laughs> Stay in the Race, Life's a Journey. That's, that's where my brain is, Stay in the Race, Life's a Journey, amen. And it just simply talks about all of what I've had to go through and how miraculously God has brought me through, amen. And then this one here, my first book, Redeemed, Restored, Recommissioned, My Testimony of Redemption. And of course, there's a workbook that goes along with that. So I thank you all for um, all of what you're doing to purchase the books and to listen to what is going on with my house situation. So today, what I thought I would bring to you is that this here, this is information regarding, and it may not be to get a good, but this is where during my trial, the judge was just being so mean and nasty to my attorney. And so um, that green is where I'm speaking. And so I just, I, I just couldn't take it any longer. And so I asked my attorney, could I say something to the judge? Because things weren't making sense to me. As to, Well, it was making sense to me because it's corruption that I'm dealing with. So I'm going I'm to read to you what began to happen. So it says here, um, I say here, there is no, this, this is um, from the, well, I'm going to start from the court. It says, um, the court, I think I made a fairly clear ruling. I'm not inclined to change it because everything that, it, in, in this place, he just did not want my, um, my expert witness to be heard. He did not want to talk about the quote unquote foreclosure because all of the, or, or he did not he didn't want to talk about that I was acquitted from um, fraudulently introducing documents being my deed and my certificate of satisfaction, and uh, so he was saying that uh, we couldn't talk about those things that I had won in the previous uh, case, which didn't make sense. But it was all about ruling. And on the side of the state so they could do whatever criminal activity, continue with the criminal activity that they were in. So um, here is my, my uh, attorney. She says, uh, actually, my client has something that she would like to say to the court. And so I'm about to read to you what I was saying. The court, he says, it's, uh, it's up to you. And I, I start reading. Your Honor, I don't know if you'd like for me to approach or just say it here because I was in my seat. But it's my personal feeling based upon the last trial as well as moving into this one that you obviously have something against my attorney. This prevents me from having a fair trial and having someone to defend me. And if that is how you are going to continue to pursue, then I would like to, to like a continuance to rethink and getting re, rethink and getting possibly another attorney to allow me a fair trial. And so the court says, I am going to do my very best. This is what he's saying. He's going to do his very best to give give me a fair trial. He says, I have no personal relationship with you. I have never met you before. I have no personal relationship with your lawyer. I appreciate that we disagree on rulings uh, from time to time. But I think you got a fair trial. You got acquitted on charges. I'm not going, I'm not going to debate this with you. Again, this is the judge speaking. I will do my very best. And now I'm speaking again. You are obviously correct. You are absolutely correct. I think I got acquitted because it was only it was only because of the grace of God. Because you did you did everything you could to have me put behind bars. I'm very saddened that 
that my liberty and my children being their mother rely on what you do. And you are trying to avoid me from having a fair trial, either because that's just a bad decision you made or because you have something against my attorney. So back to the judge, the court. He says, I don't know either one of one of you well enough to dislike you. And I say, it's knowing me, it, it's knowing me is not, is not the point. You have a relationship here with the people of the state's attorney's office. And it's clear the bias you, you have towards me and the court. So he's stopping me because he knows I'm speaking the truth. He says, in any event, there was a motion for recusal that was filed yesterday. The trial was six months ago. You had plenty of time and they take out because here on these lines where they, they take out information, they take out where we're talking about the certificate of satisfaction or what's being done in this trial. So I say absolutely. And the reason we had it is because the transcriber refused to give uh, give it to us. And I have several notes that will show what I had to do, what I had to go through to get a transcript. And so here's what was happening in that first trial. As I told you, I won. I was acquitted. And I was acquitted of the main thing. And that was having a quick claim deed, which all I did was change my married name back to my maiden name. And they didn't want to acknowledge that. So again, remember, wherever it looks like it's not flowing, that's where the conversation is about my deed or my certificate of satisfaction because they don't want to talk about any of those things because that is my evidence and my proof that I own my property at 126008. Amen. And so the court says there is nothing new in, in there. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. I'm going to do my very best to be fair. You don't agree in any event, bring in the jury, please, we will have opening arguments and then we'll begin, we'll go to lunch and come back. So what he does, again, they completely set me up. They had somebody that was on the jury, but thank God, because listen, listen, when we hear people say that God is my attorney, that God is my judge, listen, you got to be a believer to know and understand that this is what God is talking about because this man wanted to have me go to jail because they were all in this thing together so that they could do whatever they wanted to do with my home. But God said, said no. And so God, even though you heard me say, bring, he says, bring the jurors in. Every time we were talking, every time the expert witness of mine was talking, even though she couldn't be an expert witness, we were able to use her a little bit as a fact witness. He would send the jurors out of the courtroom. So here he's saying, bring them back in because constantly and clearly he did not want them to hear the facts that are in my case. And so this is where we see God clearly vindicating his daughter because I've done nothing wrong. God gave me that home in 1997 and he never took it away from me. And I believe in this season right here, if you all would stand by me and pray with me, I truly believe that beyond a shadow of a doubt, not only am I going to get be blessed and get my home back, but for every injustice that's ever been done to you, God is going to turn that thing around. So listen, be prayed up, stay prayed up, trust God in everything that you go through because God will do exactly what he said he would do. Scripture says that when we come together, two or three together, uh, he is there in the midst. I know that it's been more than two or three together because because I've seen your comments, I've seen you you like and do whatever you do there. Uh, and, and so you've seen this. Listen, come together, pray with me, not just for the justice for me, these things that have been happening to, to people around the globe, amen? Particularly, we're talking about now the United States of America, 
corruption has been going on in our government since the government started. It's just that we didn't know all of the details until we got to this age of where technology allows us to be privy to much of what the government is privy to. So please pray and trust God because as I've said to you many times before at this point in time, it's me today whose home has been stolen, whose children have missed out on the best years of their lives with their mother. I can't even hold my grandchildren. I showed you all I got seven holes in my shoulder where I've had two, two uh, surgeries uh, on this shoulder where they beat me up and threw me back and forth when they put me in jail, uh, shackled me, my feet and my hands. Amen. Uh, I, I've told you about all those things. So it's me today. But it could be you tomorrow. Call your congressperson. Call your council people, your delegates. Ask them what's happening with this lady. Why did this happen to this lady? Why has she and her children, and I've told you, one of my sons is, uh, has uh, terminal illnesses, three. They threw his life-supporting, life-sustaining um, stuff out on the yard. We had to get new stuff. Amen. So it's me today. It may be you tomorrow. God bless you.